Ahoy there, legendary listeners. You are listening to the Halo Effect podcast with Lauren Quellhurst, and we have an amazing guest speaker on today, Andrew Logan. Um, and for those of you who don't know Andrew, he lives in the Sunshine Coast and has a background in physiotherapy and is now a full-time network marketer. And basically the whole reason as to how I found Andrew was basically... I'm doing network marketing as a side hustle at the moment. I was looking to mentors and teachers who I resonated with. And, and quite often we, we look to people who have a very similar story. So that's what I found with Andrew and he came across super authentic and I just thought I would reach out and he was humble enough to be able to support me at the beginning of my journey and actually reply for one. And then second to come on the podcast. So yeah, huge thank you for that. Like, sincerely, I mean that, Andrew. It means heaps for you to be here. Um, but, yeah, just quickly, his background, he had that traditional... Yes, thanks for Oh, yay. Um, so for a lot of people, they have that trauma story where I feel like a lot of people think they have to have a really huge catalyst moment or they have to come from a crappy upbringing or something. But when I was listening to you, what resonated with me as well is that I lived a pretty good life. We weren't rich or anything, but I did well at school. I got the job and then people were saying, you should do this job, you'd be good at that. And it's like, oh, okay, yep, I should do that. Then you did a similar thing. You got the good job in physiotherapy. And then it's like, okay, what's the next thing from there? a partner, the kids, the house, that sort of situation. And you flow on and then you just kind of go, yeah, like my life's good, but what you were just saying before, but the enemy of a good life is, did I get that right? Is a great life, or did I switch? Oh, enemy of a great uh, life is a yeah, good life. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah ch chasing a great life, it can be easy to, I guess, settle for a good life. And um mm. I mean, first of all, thanks, thanks for having me on and, um, it's, you know, great to be here, but uh, I've been diving right in. Yeah. As you said, it's, um, you know, especially in Australia, there's very much that, you know, there's a badge of pride in being a battler and sort of just, you know, being in the middle and being average and the great Aussie battler is a, an honor that we wear proudly. And, you know, we had a good life. And certainly, you know, physiotherapy pays well. And my wife had a good job that she enjoyed. And we were, you know, I mean, from, from age 20, I was sort of, you know, always like, I don't want to work forever. And so I, we were, you know, investing in property as we went, but just sort of had this realization in my kind of late twenties that as much as the property investments are great, I'd, I'd be 50 or 60 before they kind of started to really <laughs> pay us back. Um, and so, which would be nice, but the kind of horse had bolted a little bit by that point on a great life. And, mm. you know, maybe we're not, you know, we're not enjoying it while we're in the prime of our life, at least. So I think people, people will change due to inspiration or desperation. And I think sometimes we love those desperation stories. We love those rags to riches stories because, you know, we see someone in a desperate situation and their back is they're against the wall. Um, but desperation can also make people do strange things at times. And desperation can, you know, just lead us to sort of go down paths that we don't want to do, but we're, we're desperate to change. And then we end up sort of in places that maybe we shouldn't be as well. So for us, it was very much inspiration. It was just meeting some other people and seeing their lifestyle. And it became a thing for us of it wasn't about, the money as such it was about choice it was about choice and time freedom in our lifestyle um, now to do that we did need to earn money we just needed to earn money from a different source um, because the lifestyle that we had with the income that we we had was nice we wanted to earn that you know a similar income um, from you know from our phones essentially and from alternate sources and that's how we found the network marketing industry and so you know, over the time, we have been able to grow that and, and grow our income, you know, to multiples of what it was. But that has simply happened by helping people do what we did. So we just, we were able to leave our jobs and leave the nine to five and, and start coming home together and raising our kids. 
And so then the next step was, and I, well, let's show other people how to do it because we had other friends who were parents and other friends who wanted to spend more time with their kids. Um, and so by default, we've been able to increase our, you know, life and, and, you know, upgrade the house and stuff. But it still all just comes back to that each morning we wake up with choice. Um, and when you have that, um, that is really nice. It's amazing to, um, I really love the inspiration versus desperation because I think even both of us being people who would be quite inspired by various people, I know that you and I have both had desperado points in our life where, you know, you're spending all the money you have because you go, I still want something different. Or I want this thing to fix X, Y, Z, but you don't actually know what the root cause of it is. And it's like, yeah, I feel like there were so many points in all of your um, podcasts that I just like want to write down all over the place because there's so there's so much value in in what you say and what you teach because um, one of the takeaway points was we can get all excited and go, yeah, you can have this side hustle and you can do all this extra money stuff, but it's like yeah, that's great. But do I still have to keep working alongside that for the rest of my life, which isn't getting me out of this current situation. And the thing that I love about what you do and what you teach is that you teach people like how to make the money, but then how to keep it and where to put it and having processes and goals with that. Because I'm someone who's very much like, yeah, make money or figure it out. Oh, I don't know what's in my bank account. And it's like, then you're always in this pendulum swing of I've got money. I don't have money. Oh, I'm in a good place because I have money. I'm in a shit place because I don't. And it's like, I don't like that my life and my stress is defined by money. And I love that that's, you know, a huge part of what you, you teach. Like I'm, I'm excited to, um, I feel like I'm going to be doing more work with you. That's where I feel I'm at now because I've, I've got clarity around just calling myself on my own shit basically of like no you're not good with money and you need to learn that um so <laughs> well, I think that's the I think that's part of the key isn't it that that making like it's a stepping stone right. towards you know freedom and choice or whatever like again I mean just sidestep like but freedom is is whatever you define it to be freedom is a subjective word so freedom from for some people is living you know in Bali or, you know, living in a van and traveling around. And that's, you know, that's uh, a budget friendly, I guess, version of freedom for freedom for other people is first class travel, you know, 24 seven kind of stuff, like it's, whatever you want it to be. But it comes down to earning more money doesn't magically make you better with it. And we see that with lotto winners, we see that with athletes, we see that with celebrities. Um, and especially, you know, young celebrities and stuff like that. And it's very unfortunate. We see all the stories of the lotto winner that made a heap of money and then five years later has nothing. And the child celebrity that made a lot of money and now they're living on the streets. And it's, they're very unfortunate stories, but they're all too common because freedom, you know, at least financial freedom isn't about having lots of money. Financial freedom is nothing to do with jets or jet skis or cars or anything like that. Financial freedom is just knowing that your money will make money for you. Mm. Because if your money is making money for you, then you don't have to get out of bed. Uh, mm. you know, and that's nice. So it's, it's sort of like financial literacy is financial freedom. And financial habits are how you create financial literacy. So unfortunately, the boring thing is that freedom comes from boring things like habits and budgets and learning how to use money. And we want the kind of rock star, like show me the money, uh, you know, like all these things. So having a side hustle and I did, um, I mean, I just, I did a little, um, I did a, a Insta story on this just yesterday and I was gonna do a YouTube video. Link is creating leverage. And that's the key. And that's why I love the network marketing industry. And that's why I really want to teach the network marketing industry how to really like really maximize what we have here because financial freedom comes from passive investments, which are boring things like property and stocks. And that's not trading. That's not, you know, algorithms and crypto trading or stuff like that. That is buying and holding things 
for years and then just living off the rent or living off the dividends. That's like at the end of the day, that's where any, anyone with freedom, it all comes back to that. And the average person working a job just can't earn enough money to buy enough investments to get freedom. And that's what I discovered. I mean, I discovered even with a great wage as a physio and I was a single guy for a lot of that time. So I didn't have a lot of expenses because I was, you know, like always wanting to hit this lifestyle of freedom, but I needed to create leverage. I needed to like, okay, well, I'm working all these hours. How can I leverage and maximize and accelerate my income so that then I can buy more investments faster so then I'll start like having that freedom. So network marketing is that ultimate missing link in the middle. But too often we just think, well, if I get this side hustle and I have more money, then I'll have freedom. And the really simple exercise is, you know, I mean, it, like extreme example, but I started with a job when I was 15 or 16 in a cafe earning like $5 an hour. Yeah. And as like a senior physio in a private practice, you'll earn about $200 an hour. So I was earning you know, 40 times the money, but I, I was not 40 times more financially free, right? And, you know, obviously at 16, I was still living with my parents, but, it, you know, when I left school and I was driving forklifts for $20 an hour just to like pay the bills at university compared to $200 an hour as a physio, I was earning 10 times more money as a physio, but I had earning $20 an hour. So the money itself doesn't define the freedom. It's how we put it to work. And that's what gives us the freedom. And, and so that's, to me, the missing link. And, and that's what I love to talk about. It holds such weight, I think, in this generation as well, where delayed gratification doesn't really seem like it exe exists at all. Like when I think, because I'm like, teach my yoga and I'm, I'm just how I am, but sometimes the way that I instruct, I had um, one of my mates from my paramedic world, he would say, you remind me of the Jocko Willink of yoga because I'd be like discipline equals freedom. But it's like I was doing that in my practice, but, you know, not in other areas of my life and particularly money, which is something that, you know, is conditioned from a young age that I always thought that people with money weren't necessarily good people or somehow they got it and they didn't deserve it and so I always just thought well I'll be the humble one and like you know have enough and that's like the common thing or how much do you make I have enough so I don't have to check my bank account when I swipe it but like when you say boredom I hear discipline and it's like you can choose for those processes to not be boring and if you see why you're doing it and it's that whole meaning behind everything that you do and it's like when you look for the why of this is giving me financial freedom maybe having a definition of what the hell financial freedom actually means not just oh I've got loads of money um, I think that's where I've actually started getting really excited about doing like my my own accounting and stuff and it's I love maths in general but the thought of ever looking into my own business statistics is like a nightmare because I had no idea what I was wanting to get out of it. and I had no end game which is something that you talk about like if you don't have a management plan how how can you measure what you're doing at all mm. well I think you you raised sort of like three great points I think the first one is yeah if you there's got to be an amount of discipline in getting up and eating well and exercising. Like you can't sit on the couch eating ice cream, watching Netflix and wake up like, where's my six pack gone? <laughs> well, like you, did, you had no discipline in your meal preparation, your nutrition, your exercise routine. And again, like, you know, six pack or like whatever your body image is again, like if it's like for me, I love to, I love CrossFit and stuff like that. You know, my wife loves like the yoga. She's really into the aerial yoga and the silks yoga mm -hmm. and stuff like that, but it's the same thing. She, um, you know, when the freedom in her body image and the confidence in her body image comes from the discipline of doing her silks. And, you know, she goes to silks, but she also, we have one at home and, you know, we are blessed to have this beautiful view and she straps up the silk and looks over there. It's very relaxing for her. And, you know, a great marriage comes from discipline, like people who are ill-disciplined at times, their marriages tend to fall apart. 
And it's, it's the same with all the things in our life. And so we have this YOLO society of like, you know, just spend your money today because you might not be here tomorrow. And, and I get that. And, and so like, you don't have these conversations with people to be boring or be a wet blanket, but you have these conversations to, to say to people, like you said, like, why don't we dream bigger? Like if you, if you want a good life, don't, don't follow me. <laughs> if you want a great <laughs> life, yeah. follow me. Like mm-hmm. I'm, I'm not here to give you a good life. I'm here to give you a great life. So if you want a good life, that's kind of just week to week, YOLO, that's, that's fine. If you want a great life, you're going to have to discipline for a while. You're going to have to have some short-term sacrifice. If you want a good body, just kind of move and eat whenever. You want a great body, follow a meal plan, follow a, an exercise plan. And, you know, if you want a great marriage, be disciplined and be honest and, and be, you know, like have all. And then the final thing I think you're talking about there is that that mindset of like having more money would make me greedy. And, you know, I, I have enough. It's like, I mean, it's, it's a few things directly on that one. Like money is an exchange of value. So sorry, that's my dog barking. Um, but money is an exchange of value. So if you aren't, you know, if, if you give more value to people and you happen to get more money from it, then you haven't taken from their life. You've given them value. And so there's that. And I think like the old mind, the old rules of money were that the only way to make money was like money was defined by land. You know, if we really go back into the medieval times, money was defined by land. The lords and ladies and the kings and queens had land. And if I wanted more land, I had to take your land. And th- that was so like, I, I could only gain by taking from you because there was a finite amount of land. And then our money was tied to the gold standard and all that kind of stuff. Now we have like digital and fiat currencies that are just created in bank accounts. And, you know, we see governments like, oh, you know, COVID, let's just create trillions of dollars. So like there's, there are, it's like, it's no longer me taking from you but we're taking from an ocean essentially, and you can take a bucket or a spoon to the ocean. The ocean's not going to mind. Um, we've got to understand that money is being created. So it's not greedy to take more if you're providing more value. If I'm scamming people, if I'm lying to people, if I'm losing myself and the whole, the, you know, the, the love of money is the root of all evil. If you lose yourself in the pursuit of it, it's the second half of the sentence that people forget to say. It's, there's nothing wrong with money if you're giving value. If you're losing yourself in the pursuit of it, yeah. then that is the root of all evil. But if I'm providing you value and I'm charities and we can you know, donate to our kids' school and help them out whenever they got fundraisers and stuff because we have more than enough and we're able to give more away, then, then that's not greedy. That's, that's taking care of more people. Yeah. I think it's really helpful as well to see almost to analyze your own behaviors of I'm happy to give people money for the value that they give me. But it's like when we look at discipline, just say in professional or personal, they differ. Or when I look at my value versus someone else's value, it we get into this mindset that's like, oh no, I'm not worth that. Or oh no, I'm happy to do it for free. And then yeah, or like whatever it is, whether it's work related and discipline related, we have these different worlds that we exist in within our own world. And we're like, oh, in work, that's okay. That's that's cool. But when I get home, I'm going to treat my partner like this, or I'm, you know, not going to eat well. But when I go to work, I'm going to tell people that they need to eat well and they need to have a good mindset. It's like, but are you doing those things? Like, and I think that that comes across in certainly the people that I resonate like yourself, like I know that you practice what you preach and that's exactly why I reached out because you can tell when someone's like a load of shit, so to speak, because it's just like when I see dentists who have shitty teeth or like paramedics who have bad health or physiotherapists who have terrible joints and you're like, I know some parts could be genetic, but show me how you're doing what you're trying to tell me to do and then I'll I'll listen. (laughs) Mm, Well, I think, yeah, don't take advice from broken, unhappy people and right. unless your goal is to become broken, unhappy is oh. the sort of, you know, mindset. Mm-hmm. like if, if you want to be happy, listen to happy people. And right. it's like that, you know, if, yeah, if, if Angie 
marriage counselor who's been happily married for 30 years or do you go to like you know your brother-in-law who's on his fourth engagement kind of thing like mm. you know who do we we have to be so careful of who we take advice from because as you say like we if if we spoke to our friends or if we spoke to other people the way we spoke to ourselves we wouldn't have any friends we are so critical and horrible to ourselves at times and we do not value ourselves more nearly enough and mm. you know even just i think like the other the other day i was chatting to a lady and, and i was at the shops and it was just you know i was just randomly talking to a lady at the shops and she's saying oh you know there's a, a fruit store down the road where stuff's actually a bit cheaper i just kind of was gonna let you know and i was like oh how far and so oh, it's about a 45 minute drive i'm like each way she's like, yeah it's like I'm driving an hour and a half to save $2 um, because like, what is the value? Like she is sitting there saying like, I'm worth a dollar an hour essentially because I will drive all that way to save a couple of dollars. Now, if they had better, if they had a better quality product. Okay. But she was basically saying like, I'm going to drive all this way to save a couple of dollars. And I'm like, you need to value yourself because you're sitting there saying to the universe, I am so worthless that right. like, what else could I be doing with those two hours in my life? And we need to understand how, no, no matter what it is, we all have a, an imperfect perfection. And we all have something in our life that is so valuable to someone else. And I'm not saying to go out and monetize that. I'm just saying, understand that every test we have is a testimony that can help someone else. And every mess we have had is a message that we and, and value their life. That. cut out there yeah. oh i just saying like we we have these imperfections that will help other people if we just share our story and share that value to the world and understand everything we have ever been through is a value and like not to mention like however far she's traveling it's like my mind just automatically goes to isn't that more money and fuel and all of the other crap that you're putting into the world of just going out there in time and again like the time value is like an hour and a half either way it's like that doesn't even compute in my brain of how that even makes sense but yeah to her she's looking at I guess probably one item that to her marks what value is and um as opposed to kind of going within and going hey like I am I am worth this. Yeah, maybe I don't have a college degree or I don't have that perfect job, but I myself am better than that or can, can do more than that. Um, which brings me to, I guess, I'm trying to be mindful of the time as well with you. So have I'll, I'll ask two more questions and if we get time, we'll do a bit of a rapid fire question at the end. Um, yeah, sure. So how we were raised obviously we've kind of grown into this this line of work but i know that you've got two kids is that right yeah um what ages are they and are at the, are they at an age where you've started like implementing lessons with them in in real life situations that are like teaching them these kinds of things because i just think this would be invaluable if i was like um a kid yeah, it's, it's a really great question. And I guess like, yeah, it's, I mean, I, I grew up in a very traditional and, and family and, you know, my parents sacrificed incredible amounts to give us a, a nice home and a private education and then a university education. And so, you know, I would never ever say, you know, like in, in that to them, that was how you sacrifice and they dad grew up on a farm and, and that, you know, they, they just grew up with very little. So for them to provide us with an education was to them the best way to set us up. And, 
and certainly, you know, physio was a great way to spend my twenties. And I learned a lot of about how humans work and, and then running a business and all that kind of stuff. But for us, yeah, with the kids, I think it's such an interesting thing because it, first of all, you like talk to a lot of parents and they say, I'd love to do what you do, but I don't want my child to see me on the phone at night and stuff like that. And I'm like, I get that, but A, your child's growing up with a phone in their hand. Like, let's just be realistic here. Like, I'm not saying it's awesome, but let's just be realistic. I sat on the plane yesterday, you know, with two kids fighting over one iPad. And like, you know, like, I'm like, technology is evolving and the world is evolving in that way where you know it's normal for us to all be carrying these phones around so why not look at it okay well yeah if you sat there and scrolled facebook or scrolled instagram non-stop or you just watched cat videos non-stop yeah that's a bad look but let's be honest that your kids are going to grow up with this new technology and so you need to embrace that and say well let me show you how to monetize that so the things we've done with our kids is, you know, talk about them having their own YouTube channels. And, you know, we've, we've tried sort of little things of, they, they had a little channel there for a while where they were making meals, like it was called Kids in the Kitchen. And, and unfortunately they just, you know, they, they, they weren't consistent enough and, you know, life, life sort of got in the way for a little bit and it fell off the face, but they've, they've come back to us recently and asked us about, you know, like when can we set up our new YouTube channels? And so Jack's seven and she's 14. So Jack, it's just about just encouraging his creativity and just letting him understand that, you know, what, what do you love to do? I love to make Lego. All right, well, imagine if you had a Lego YouTube channel, just starting to like plant those things in your head of like, how could you monetize your passion? Oshi, because she's conversations so we do invest in property a lot and so we take her to the meetings at the bank with her just to you know osmosis and just like you know see how things work and kind of understand and then you know like if I'm speaking at an event or something she'll come along and just see me on stage um when I'm creating a YouTube video or creating a coaching program I'll actually ask her I was like I need you and I'll, you know, I'll pay you by the hour, but I need you to like record the videos for me. Just so like, then she's forced to listen to me for a few hours. But, you know, she might just she's picking up a few things along the way. And, you know, like I'm outsourcing some of the, like, can you just hold the camera and all that kind of stuff for me? Um, so just in everyday life, just trying to bring these things in. Um, you know, like if I send a gift to someone or something like that, I'll ask, I'll ask her to do it. And like, you know, and this is why you, we, we thank this person and we, and we send them a gift and all those sorts of things. Um, so yeah, she's a little bit older. And so she's starting to think now, like she's grade nine. And so she's, you know, what am I going to do after school conversations start coming in? And it's like, well, this is what mum and I do. And this is, you know, like how to invest and this is what we can help you with, but whatever it is, we'll support you. But let's be honest that circling back to what we we're talking before was when we say to parents, they're like, oh, I don't want my kid to see me on my phone, like working in the evenings. And I'm like, yeah, but they see you leave at 8 a.m. and they see you come home at 6 p.m. cranky. Right. So what's what's wrong with them getting excited, <clears throat> excuse me, from like seven to nine? Like, why not, <clears throat> why not show them some passion? Right. Like when you get home from work, because if you just got home and got cranky and then just sat on the TV, <clears throat> sat on the couch and watched TV, excuse me what does that teach them that's right dude like and what i hear is really cool about that is they're growing up in a household where what you do is normal and like you're actually seeing it as a really positive thing of like you know you can grow up in a normal that is a really um unhealthy environment and that models what you do moving forward but you know, who knows, your kids might leave and go, no, I'm not going to do what mum and dad do because, you know, kids go through those stages of like, no, I'm going to be different and whatever. But they know through what you do and seeing you be successful and seeing the attitude and the connections that you have, that there's a place for them to come back to and they're, they're getting educated of a different way of living really like I I feel like once you're in I kind of describe it I'm like there's a life before network marketing and a life after it and I just feel like it's a it's a Narnia door where you come into it and you're like 
my God, there's like a million people in here. But then it also feels like when you exist in your same life that it's like no one knows about it in a, that it's like it's strange yeah well I think it's it's a really important thing isn't it because again like you talk to people and they're like oh I don't want to do this my whole life and I'm like but that's the whole point right like that's not the negative that's the whole point the whole point is that you create this you know you build you have this vehicle that you can get in and you can build it and you can get yourself leverage you can get yourself residual so that then you can step away and <clears throat> like you know again financial freedom is a great goal the step before that is about financial security so when you have financial security that's when your bills are paid whether you go to work or not yeah. and that's when you have a safety net and that at that point that's when you can say okay i have a safety net now I can step away from work and I just take that clutter out of my brain and I take those 50 hours out of my week. And so that's like, I think the like saying like, set yourself up an angel investor to really chase your passion, you know, and you can be the person that invests in your business. And so, you know, like, find find a company find a vehicle find a product that you are passionate and excited about and get in there and if you don't want to do it for 50 years no one's making you but why not just do it to a point where then you can like you have the stability you have the time you have the choice and you have the finances to really chase what you want to do and then you can because that's the the biggest thing that people don't follow their passions is because they just physically don't have the time or the money to invest into a business. And so, you know, now like, you know, that like I never would have had the time to do a podcast or videos or anything like that when I was a physio, because I was just having to work from 7 a.m. to 6 p.m. to like, you know, run the business. Yeah. I learned so much in that time. But the whole thing was that if I do this to a point where I can step away, and then I can like, then I've got the time to read the books and chase the passion. Then I can really change the, like my world. And another key point in what you were saying is like, I don't want to have to do this for the rest of my life. It's like something that we're really conscious about. Um, I live with my sister and her partner and it's just awesome. I love it here. And we're, we're really conscious with the, the words that we say and like personal development in general, but it's like, I get to do that for the rest of my life. Like, hell yeah. Like find something that you get to do. And instead of like, oh, I have to do that. And it's like, it can be in like the most minute of things. Like, oh, I have to mow the lawn. It's like, I get to mow the lawn. Like I've got functioning legs. Like I have the ability to go outside. I'm fortunate enough to have a house. And um, yeah, it's kind of reframing just even the smallest things in your sentences of like, I get to do that. I don't, you don't have to do anything. <laughs> um, but if you, yeah. if you want a better life, like you get to have a better life. And I truly believe that. Um, yeah. And we can really change that truly with just our language and our language will then reframe our, like the wiring in our brain and the way that we look at the world. And we, we look at just the little things in the day. Mm. Well, our, our thoughts become our words and our words become our actions and our actions become our results. So yeah. it all, it all starts with the thoughts and, and we, you know, it's, I, I, I you know, again, we, I, I get, I always sort of talk about health and weight loss and stuff because I think people understand that a bit more, but it's like it's the decision in. to lose. Yeah. Like the analogy, like the, the decision to lose weight doesn't start in the gym or the kitchen you know, or the running track or the yoga studio or whatever, it starts with the decision that you don't want your pants to be tight anymore or you don't want to look at the reflection in the mirror that, that you see anymore. It starts with the decision to change. So anything in life, you know, changing your financial position isn't going to start with a podcast or a book or a coaching course or, you know, a new side hustle venture. It's going to start with the decision to say, you know what, I... I'm going to change. Yeah. And then when you make that statement and you own it, because so often we're like, we should do this and we should do that. No, I, 
I mm -hmm. am going to do this. And, and then when we take ownership of that and we take ownership of everything that is in our life and everything that isn't in our life, once we go through that process and say, you know what, everything that is in my life and not in my life at the end of the day has come down to the decisions I have made. And I'm going to decide to make a different. Yeah. Oh, I feel like I could talk to you all day. It's like, <laughs> again, like the podcast situation, I feel like my cup of tea is getting to the end of the cup and I'm trying not to be sad, but <laughs> you've just got so much value and I really appreciate it. And um, I'd be curious to know who, who were your first teachers and who like your top three teachers or role models would be today that you really um like you still look to their content to being valuable relevant um because we oh, like we reflect the people that we model ourselves around so um yeah i'd be i'm um, interested yeah well i think um my the first book that changed my life i think was was rich dad poor dad mm -hmm. and then you know, I, I started reading a lot of Robert Kiyosaki's books and, um, you know, this, this is 20 years ago and it, admittedly he's a little bit, um, you know, his, his message is a little bit stale these days um, and, you know, like he's, he's got some friendships that he might want to review um, and, and written a book with some people he might want to review now. Um, but again, like 20, 25 years ago, that Rich Dad Poor Dad was... A, you know, a Bible of for the people looking to get out. And, and so reading that was really like a big opening for me. Um, so that he, he's one that, you know, just sort of anyone who says to me, like, where do I start? It's sort of like, we'll just start there. Right. Um, and, and then go. Um, and then certainly in the last 10 years, so a, about 10 years ago, I, I guess inherited and, and, you know, had a staff member and it was, it was, a, it was a, you know, interesting relationship because technically I was her boss, but she and I just had this great, um, you know, time and talk about like investing and business and goals and stuff. And that was always, you know, one of the things like I loved, I loved having a business, but in business, you sort of have to employ people without ambition. Because if they have too much ambition, they, they want to like leave and start Hi. their own business. Yeah. So, so there's always this kind of like pendulum <laughs> of like, you know, I want, you know, initiative and ambition in my people, but not too much because you might leave. <laughs> um, but she was, you know, this great person who we worked together. And so she's been a sort of mentor of mine. And she was the person who, you know, eventually like finally enough introduced me to network marketing. And we had been doing all these other things beforehand and, um, you know, talk about it a lot where, you know, it was like, we, we, we just had this goal that we, we would like, you know, her and her husband and myself and whoever came into my life, we, we were all going to be financially free together and we we're going to travel the world together. And we like tr tried trading pot belly pigs and we tried property investment. And we like, we actually wrote a book about back pain because we were both physios and all these sorts of stuff and nothing really worked. And we made some money and we lost some money. But then, you know, like we, we sort of went down this path together. And then recently, certainly once getting into the network marketing industry, leadership has been a big thing of mine. And I find John Maxwell just an amazing leadership trainer and leadership speaker and leadership author. Yeah. I got to spend 48 hours with him two years ago. Oh, wow. And um, it's been, I mean, there was, there was about 30 or 40 of us in the room, but it was very intimate um kind of two-day thing where we just got to really sit down and he just he basically just sat there on a chair for two days and just told us his life story and um you know we had breakfast together and all that sort of stuff um and then look, Fra fraser brooks is a great mentor and friend of mine at the moment who's yeah. really just helping like it, there, there's sort of that point of you know, it's, everything's all relative. And again, and I look at our life now and say, yes, yes, we've got a really good life now, yeah. but like, it could be even better. Like, you know, imagine if we could do this and imagine if we could do stuff now that will like set our grandkids up forever and, you know, having sort of those conversations and we could change our great grandkids future sort of stuff. And so he's been one who's just recently sort of said like, you know, get out of that success coma a little bit. Yeah. And, and kind of challenge me. So 
I mean, cycling back to a question you were talking before, I think one of the greatest things that pushes us every day is what is the, what are we, what is the, you know, what are we teaching our kids every day? What's the impression we're giving for our kids? Because, you know, there, there is an ability for us to get up, drop them to school and then binge watch Netflix till 3 p.m. and then pick them up. And, you know, it's like, well, what, what did you guys do all day? Watch Netflix? Like, you know, what, what does that teach them? What does that teach yeah. them about ambition, about drive, about, you know, tenacity, in, initiative, all that kind of stuff. So um, they're, they're probably like four super influential as far as two, well, I, I eventually met John. I, I doubt I'll ever meet Rob. Uh, but, <laughs> you know, two, two authors um, and then two kind of friends who became, you know, mentors, but also like, you know, we're, we're kind of good friends. And, and I do believe if you work hard enough at anything, your mentors become your friends. And Absolutely. so, sort of, you know, like Jen and Fraser were both friends who became mentors, but now we do get to travel the world together. And I was, I was just chatting with Fraser this morning because he's in the Maldives for his birthday and Angie yeah. and I are planning on going there next year for our 10 year anniversary. We we're going to go there last year because it was our 10 years of dating anniversary, oh, but COVID was that. So, uh, go there together next year. So, you know, like us and we're all planning these great holidays all around the world. And it comes back to, and again, uh, circling back to what we were saying before, the harder you play, the harder you work, the harder you can play. And I think like right. we talk about that instant gratification and, and even, you know, post gratification, like after pay, everything's credit card, after pay, like have it now and, and deal with the consequences later. And success, you got to pay in full upfront. You know, yeah. rent is due in full and upfront. And that's why people don't like to chase it because you've got to pay in advance and there's no guarantee that you'll get anything at the end of the day either. You just got to put it all up in front and then you might get it later. But when you get it later, that's when like whole new worlds open up and that's when you can just, you know, live this amazing, amazing life. You've just got to say, you know what, I'm going to do the work first and I'm going to work really hard and then I can play really hard and then I can have a heap of fun. Yes. It's, you know what, when you said that, I was just like, it feels like life is a, um, it's like a series of kind of, you have these fees in each chapter of your life and it's like, but the difference between someone who is like super, super successful and someone who's just kind of like comfortable is like the one who's super successful goes in knowing that there is no refund. Like you don't expect a refund and you just keep hustling and you're like, crap like I got to keep going because I'm not expecting to be like rewarded or like paid back for anything it's like maybe that'll come and maybe that'll be nice you know but like if I keep pushing forward I know that it will come I'm not I'm not just kind of sitting on my butt waiting for it to happen um yeah well you know we'll have to come back and we'll have we to will. chat again but we will you know yes. obviously we can unpack that a lot but yeah I love what you do because you're going to do it for free for a while <laughs> like, yeah you know you've sure. got to you've got to you know, you've got to be passionate because yeah you're going to have to do it for free for a while but that's oh, yeah. you know that's where you learn the skills and that's where you have the fun it's all the values here and yeah I could chat to you for ages dude and I've got many more questions but just before we wrap it up where can people find you so I can put that put that in the show notes and for people to um find you on social media or your website to get in touch um yeah yeah well so my, my podcast way out you know so it's, so it's the way out podcast and it's just talking about that financial mindset and how you find your way out uh and then social media is at andrew james logan um you know facebook instagram tiktok um you know yes. to, to my 14 year old daughter's teaching me tiktok <laughs> um and then andrewlogan.net is, is the website. So www.andrewlogan.net. AndrewLogan.com is a artist in New York. He's a sculptor or, you know, some kind of artist in New York. So unfortunately there's already an Andrew Logan with that website, but AndrewLogan.net. And like, I've got a blog there with just a heap more information that you can, you know, follow along for free and get more value. Yep. And I highly recommend it. Whoever listens to this, if it's no one, I don't care. I'm watching it. I'm listening to it. It's amazing. And I continue. I know I'll continue to 
look at the content that you're doing that's staying relevant. And I'm sure we'll have, yeah, another one of these chats where I'll get you on and, or we'll just, yeah, hang out and chat over the um, socials for now. Yeah, no worries. I so much appreciate you coming on, dude, and your time. And um, yeah, let's keep hustling. Let's keep putting out greatness to the world and adding value to people everywhere. Sounds great. Thank you. Take care. Bye.